Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires campaign review, this time covering Balthazar Geld. Now I think in Warhammer 3, Balthazar Geld's campaign, at least to begin with, is a lot less frustrating than it was in 2, mainly because of this faction here. In Warhammer 2, these guys here owned these three settlements, making them kind of difficult to eliminate, especially due to this settlement here. These two were easy enough to take, but that one was a pain. And so they would constantly just jump in the underway and send full stacks every other turn, making it kind of difficult for Gelt to justify leaving and doing the other things that they need to do, such as deal with the vampire accounts, which they would get going straight away. Vlad and Manfred would just immediately start knocking out elect accounts, whereas in Warhammer 3, uh, Vlad spends quite a bit of time dealing with Tempelhof, which in Warhammer 2, if you're not playing as the Vampire Counts, um, Tempelhof doesn't exist, it's all just owned by Manfred. So that buys you a fair bit of time before he starts causing problems. Hockland's definitely going to get wiped out, you can't really do anything about that when playing as um, Gelt, but you do have one faction worth of, dis of destroyed elect accounts buffer, so it's not going to hurt you right away. Everyone else should last at least a little while. Dryker's obviously a bit of a pain. But yeah, your top priority for the early-ish campaign should probably be taking out Vlad, and I do feel like in Warhammer 3 it's a lot more comfortable. In addition to that, Clan Spittle has left, which is really good because in Warhammer 2 they would just cause osmosis scaven corruption into your territory, causing huge problems. But they're gone now, so they're not doing that. And if you want to come up here and grab Gristle Valley early, you can totally do that. It's owned by, it's owned by no one, it's a ruin, so you can pick up some tusks so you can trade. Uh, you got a bit of a fealty problem over here, but that was the same in Warhammer 2, and that's just a matter of luck. Uh, so you can either deal with that or not deal with that. It just depends on your campaign. But overall, I feel like Gilt's campaign has enough going on to be challenging while not being super frustrating. This is probably a mid to sort of medium high level difficulty campaign that I would recommend playing this on either hard, very hard, or legendary. Uh, to get the uh, most enjoyment out of it. I think Gelt is a good legendary lord with a good playstyle, um, and he's a powerful legendary lord on the battlefield, so I quite enjoy him. So I do enjoy this campaign quite a bit. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this review, and also which legendary lord you'd like me to cover next. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time.